C. C is discussion regarding the city's special assessment processes as set forth for resolution number 8242, approved on March 9, 2010, which expressed the city of Topeka's support for the special assessment process and establishes certain guidelines for the management and control of projects paid by special assessments. Mr. City Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As Mr. Kaufman comes forward to present on this item, we really want to do two things today. Um, the first thing that we, we want to talk about our special assessment policy, and I appreciated uh, Councilmember Harmon bringing up the 2004 debt policy uh, guidelines that were adopted by this council. Um, one of the problems that we're going to address today and, and in the near future are specifically flowing out of that debt policy in terms of how we dealt with special assessments. Uh, but our objective today is to walk through the special assessment, what our policy is, how we've been handling it, and then talk about specific um, issues that, that have resulted from that that are going to present a challenge to this body going forward. So with that as a lead-in, I'd like to ask Mr. Kaufman to uh, present on this topic. Hey, Mr. Kaufman. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. So Jim Men or the city manager mentioned we want to talk more specifically about the special assessment benefit district process tonight. Um, we see this as a tool for the city, and it's one of really many tools that are utilized through the development process. Um, I'm, some of you are familiar with some of these tools. If you sit on the Pat city council with tax increment finance districts or uh, community improvement district. So it's just one of multiple tools that are available for cities to that the state allows us to utilize for development. So a special assessment district. Basically what you're doing with a special assessment district is you have a defined area and that defined area is uh, you have some improvements that you to do to that district. So in the case of a typical development you would maybe have water, sewer, and streets, that would be those improvements for a district. Um, once those streets or those improvements are finished, after they're completely finished, we move into the assessment process. And that's one thing that we're gonna be talking about tonight, moving forward, um, what that process will look like for some specific projects. But, and then those, those fees are placed on to the tax rolls and then whoever owns those properties will pay for them typically over the next 20 years. Um, it's been a tool that's been utilized to encourage development throughout the community. Um, it's a tool that's utilized throughout the state with various cities. Um, it's a, been on, I think it's been on state law since about 1957. So it's been around for a while, it's been widely used and people use it to encourage development. So one thing that we wanna talk about tonight is risk. And one thing that was mentioned earlier, I think is about being steward and stewardship and being good stewards of tax dollars and other people's money. So one thing that we're looking at is how to mitigate that risk and how to protect the city moving forward. Um, regardless in these districts of whether or not the developer or the homeowner pays, we still have to pay for the bonds that are put on those districts. So you can see this graph here. This, it's really a tell almost of two times. So you have the pre-recession of 2008. If you look at that, uh, we were collecting about 97% of, of those assessments. Um, compared to the post-recession time frame, which we're averaging about 83% over the past six years. So it's really a tell of two times and how the impact of that Great Recession <laughs> on the development community has really occurred here in Topeka. So getting back to being good stewards, so one thing that we see is, and as we look at mitigating risk for the city, is an option for a new policy for the city of Topeka in regards to special assessment districts. So the current policy was adopted, I believe, in 2010. Um, there's no formal or no financial guarantees that are built into that policy. So 
a lot of cities have policies throughout the state and included in those policies they utilize various things to have financial guarantees in place to protect the city. So moving forward, we'd like to recommend that the city start the discussion of developing a new policy for special assessments that puts in some type of financial guarantee on the development community. You know, those, those can vary from uh, contribution requirements, whether they come in and they, um, if they pay for streets and water improvements, and then the city bonds the streets, or you have them uh, put a specific contribution up front, like 30%. Um, another option that's, that's widely used is letters of credit. So in the case that if a developer wasn't paying, we could go to the bank who would have a letter of credit with the, with the developer, and we could pull that letter of credit from the bank. The bank would pay us, and then the bank would recoup that from the developer. So that's another option. Also, due, dil due diligence of developer finances, just making sure that we've got good partnerships in place. And that, uh, so those are all things that we could discuss as we look at developing a new policy. Also tonight, we wanted to highlight a few, a couple of examples, probably of why we needed a new policy in the city. One area that we really want to focus on is Lawrence Bay Estates. Um, this was a project that was started in 2007. So pre-recession, uh, building permits at that time for new residential development were skyrocketing compared to now where we're probably doing average 70 to 80 building permits a year. So just for example, this one development uh, has 178 units in it. Um, that's maybe about two years worth of building permits that are available just in one development in the community. Um, so in 2007, this was started by Brainstorm Development Group. In 2008, it was foreclosed on. So through that process, there's been uh, a number of, I think, handoff to new owners. So currently, we, we have two banks that have property out there. There are four developers in the community that have property. And then are, there are three individual property owners in that property. So um, this map here, the blue area, kind of highlights the Lawrence Bay Estates that we're specifically talking about. Of this 178 lots, there are currently three houses that are out there. There's about two here, and then there's one that's being constructed currently there. Um, so there's a lot of lots available. Um, so some of the issues that we wanted to talk about with this is basically this is one of those cases where we don't have any financial guarantees. So over the next 20 years, we're estimating, and this is based on today's market rates, which are also subject to change moving forward, about 11.1 .1 million uh, in bond debt that we will, if the development or the developers out there or the banks that are involved didn't pay, the city would have to continue paying those bonds. Um, another issue in regards to that development is the estimated total specials. And this is really kind of really the crux of the issue. Um, we're estimating the total specials currently at 3,300 a year. So in talking to the development community, one thing that they're saying is that the market rate for specials right now is 1,800 to 2,100. So the specials in this development are going to be significantly over the market rate. So our question moving forward with those high specials is one, um, is the city going to be able to recoup the investments that it's put into that development and due to the high market rate? With, are those going to be marketing, marketable properties? And can the developers and the banks out there pay those specials? over a long-term time frame that it could take to develop this property. Um, right now, I might pause for any questions since I've covered a lot. So. Yeah, that's, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of material um, to try to get, get our arms around and understand. Uh, so actually, <clears throat> for instance, if you went out there to, buy a, uh, to build a house, you would have specials of $3,300. And how is that determined? 
Mr. Mayor, that's uh, so that's an estimate right now. So mm -hmm. I know one thing, and that's that the sewer has been applied on those properties. So when I say apply, that means that those special assessments are on the tax rolls. So every <coughs> year, if you bought a house out there, you would be charged seven hundred and one dollars for just the sewer. Now there's four projects that have yet to be applied. <laughs> Um, and one, those projects have to be complete in order to apply them. So this year we're looking at applying three of them. One of them is a street, the street improvement, the water improvement, and then also a pond improvement. There's another pond project that's still currently being constructed that will be applied next year. Um, so after all those are applied, we're estimating, you know, those to be somewhere around 3,300 a year. But we have to do the streets. I mean, that was part. Of, that's the agreement that we made. Or you know, or you know, why, someone said, well, let's just not build the streets. But that's a part of it. Mr. Mayor, the streets are done. I mean, this oh. the challenge here is all of this is already built. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I, that's what I was assuming. I thought you were okay. saying we're going to build the streets this year no. in the next no. program. Yeah. The last we, yeah, I know it, they're all there. And so why did you mean when you say these plans of the streets and the pond, et cetera, they're not on the tax, they're not being taxed or on the spe included in the specials now? Mr. Mayor, that is correct. So there's a process that we follow that's laid out in statute. So after the projects are complete, which three of those projects are complete, the street, the water, and the uh, small pond. So after they're complete, then, and we'll talk about this here in a little bit too, is that there's a process that the city council has to, that goes through, that you set a public hearing, then you hold the public hearing. After the public hearing, there's an assessment ordinance that is approved. And then that assessment ordinance we take and uh, to the county, which applies those specials to the property tax rolls. So the following year, they would get that tax bill and start paying those. Yeah, thank you. That helps to understand the um, Councilman Jensen. So two quick questions. Um, so the houses that are out there now are not currently paying the specials, correct? Ms. Uh, Council Member Jensen, I could not answer that question without looking at the property okay. tax roll. Okay. So. And then the other question is, so $11 million comes out of the current property tax assessments we have for the city, right? Out of the mill levy? <coughs> if we don't find some other way to pay this off? Council Member Jensen, that's correct. If, if the bonds are not paid, if we don't receive those special assessments from the county uh, tax distributions, then the city would be obligated to pay those moving forward. Thank you. And that goes back to the reason we need to perhaps have a new process <laughs> so that doesn't happen. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a question about the, the value, uh, the, the estimates. I was not on the council when this original project came online. I was here by the time it was in trouble and there was a suggestion that the council get in, that the city get involved on these to help with the specials. What I recall was a, a room full of people who lived in that development and near it who said, if you will please do this, it will help us sustain our values and help us get this um, property sold. And in particular, it was, if you will, the usual, the streets and the, and, the, and the utilities, but that the pond was particularly critical because it was the amenity that made it the upscale development. You know, besides the terrain, it's a really beautiful area, but that that the ponds and having them as part of that development were what made it special and more valuable and that and that conversely was just draining it of energy and of sales and so the issue would be you quoted i think that the typical specials would be maybe 1800 to 2100 um Everyone seemed to think that this projected amount of specials was reasonable for that development at the time so would it be reasonable for us or me to think that, that that must have been because that addition of the pond was not a normal amenity and so the various features of that development, but especially having the pond fixed and, and in really good order at the time anyway, people thought would be worth the 
additional specials? Councilmember Hiller, I can't speak to what occurred at that time, but um, I can tell you a little about, about the pond and the neighborhoods that it affects. So it doesn't only affect the blue highlighted area in right. the map, it also affects the neighborhood to the north and also a little bit in the neighborhood to the south. Right. So those special assessments will be applied over a larger area. Um, I think the pond assessments for the big pond will be about 58% will be applied to this blue area highlighted. Okay. Because I, I recall those folks saying, we're willing to do that. They passed petitions and, and so on, and we're, we're ready to go. So I, I probably didn't know enough about it to separate it to normal specials and what they were doing at the time, but they seemed very comfortable with the numbers. So your concern is not, we can't very well not spread it to the blue area and then spread it to everybody else, though. Um, Councilmember Hiller, when the petition process is started, there's a, it's stated in that petition how those specials are going to be applied to those properties. So when they came before the uh, governing body mm -hmm. to talk about that pond project, they, and included in that petition, they would have had already stated how those specials were so. going to be put on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Any That's other, good for now. Any other questions? So, okay, you want to proceed? So, council members and Mr. Mayor, um, part of these we're presenting as options. We're not presenting these as recommendations. So, these are options that you have that, and you're very limited statutorily on how you can uh, apply <laughs> these options. So, these are three that we wanted to discuss with you tonight. So, number one is assess the full specials. Um, so, no special deals. Uh, if you look at high specials, that might be equal difficult to sell properties and also difficult to recoup any losses. Uh, number two option is the council has the ability to adjust the interest rate that's set on those properties. Now that doesn't mean that when we go to the bond market, we're going to pay whatever interest rate that we receive based on the bond market, but you can set the amount that's applied to those properties at the rate that you choose. And that's one thing that's statutorily allowed. Um, the third is partial prepayments, which is an option that the city hasn't looked at in the past. And it's a practice that's done across the state with various other cities. We think that this is a viable option to look at. So in the past, let's say, if you had a house and you, you had $1,000 that was going to be put on that house through the special assessment process. In the past practice, it's been that you had to pay that full thousand amount during a 30-day prepayment or a pay-in period after the public hearing and the assessment ordinance is adopted. You have a chance to pay those off. So past practice has been you had to pay the full amount. We think it would be a good practice moving forward to allow partial amounts. So maybe instead of that $1,000, you would come in and you'd pay $500. So it would cut the special assessments in half, and which maybe in a case like Lawrence Bay would allow the development community or others who own those properties to come in and try to cut those specials down by making a financial contribution during that 30-day pay-in period. So the timeline coming up, um, and this really gets into, and we're, it's a fairly tight time frame, and we have a 10-1 deadline. So that, and that's what we work, we had to work back off of. Um, so that 10-1 deadline is to pay off the temporary notes. So every year we have to pay off temporary notes on 10-1. So temporary notes would be like uh, if, you decided you're going to build a house and so you went to the bank and you got a construction loan so those just like that it's a temporary loan and just with the city we take out temporary loans to help finance any construction projects and we can roll them over for so many years so we're working back off of that october 1st deadline so in order to do that 
we're going to ask you next week to set a public hearing. So at that point, there's no decisions made. Um, we're recommending a public hearing date of June 9th. So after at the public, you will hear comments from the public then. And then after that, there's typically an assessment ordinance that's voted on after the public hearing. So that assessment ordinance is what starts the process of putting it on to the tax rolls. So if that assessment ordinance was approved, uh, the next week we would have a publication and then that on June 15th, that would start that 30 day pay in period that we've been discussing. So that's where people could come in and if they wanted to pay down, down those specials, they could at that time. So after that, we, after the 30 day pay in period, which would be kind of mid July by that point, that's when we would start to size the bonds and then in August go to market to lead up to that 10 1 uh, temporary note payoff. Are there any questions about the process? The person or the entity making the payment is whoever owns that property. <coughs> so if it's a developer who owns 10, then he has 10. Mr. Or Mayor. if there is a financial institution that owns 20, they have to pay that. Mr. Mayor, that is correct. Okay. Councilman Schwartel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Brandon, you said to set the public hearing on June 9th. Are you planning on doing that on a council night? Uh, Councilmember Schwartz, yes, yeah. that would be on a council night. Could we do the public hearing another night, not a council night? I mean, I would like to be at that public hearing. It would be part of the council. It, it is. It would be, pu oh, here. Okay, I thought yeah. you meant a Okay, yeah. we, we <laughs> conduct the hearing. Okay, sounds good. And we hope you will be here. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? I'm sorry, City Manager. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to clarify a point that that, that uh, Brandon had made earlier. And once again, I thank Councilmember Harmon. Um, we scrambled to look up the 2004 uh, debt policy and we made reference to the fact that, that this policy was established, I believe you referenced in 2010. I'm sure the work that was done in 2010 uh, was actually picked up from the 2004 uh, debt policy. And it, it states that the assessments are levied on properties benefited by the project, the, issues, re, the issuer's recourse for non-payment is foreclosure and the remaining debt becomes the city's direct obligation. So um, the, what we're addressing here is we don't know what's going to happen in the future. We know that it's been a, a challenged property in the past. We always have to take a look at what's in the long-term best interest of the city. Um, but uh, this, is a, this is a complicated issue and we wanted to get it out here in front of this body. Make a decision specifically pertaining to Lawrence Bay, but more importantly, we really want to, uh, to revisit this policy and make sure that we don't put ourselves in a situation going further that we can't mitigate any potential risks. This is a very valuable tool that's used by a lot of people. We just need to make sure that we protect the city as we use this tool. Okay, I'm going to proceed. One other development that we wanted to address, which under the current policy, there's nothing that really addresses this type of situation. This is Bear Lake subdivision. So this subdivision is out Southwest Yerish and Southwest Huntoon. This project was approved in 2010. To date, only the, the, we've got 227,000 of expenses. Those expenses have been for design work. So we haven't had any actual improvements to the property, but in this case, you know, it's a question of after five years, do you continue the development of that property or of the improvements or would it be the governing body's wishes that staff work to bring back some, a resolution or something to end that petition process? And then we'd probably have to discuss at that point what we can what legal ramifications we have for the two hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars? Okay, and you all understand this. All right. So, and you are going to bring back a recommendation on this particular one for us to consider. I'm just I'm trying to think where we are, how we're going forward on this. I apologize. He's looking to me for direction, and, and I was uh, talking. 
Could you? Repeat? Well, I was just where. So, are you coming back with a uh, suggestion? Uh, I know we sort of you, we have the here's the problem. Yes. How do we how do we address this? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor Body, we are we're we're looking yeah. to to hear your discussion on this particular item. It really comes down to a, a, a choice, and I was going to say simple choice, but it's anything but simple. Um, do we want to uh, just proceed with our policy as it is, uh, and that is to proceed with the um, with the uh, applying the levies uh, to this property? And even though, and I'm not going to speak on behalf of anybody else, especially the, de the development and, and ownership community, but we think that there are some potential risks uh, to the property if that happens. So do we just proceed? And and run the risk of of take you know having to uh, service the debt going forward, or do we look for some sort of solution? And in this particular case, uh, Mr. Kaufman identified two. One was setting the um, the interest rate at a particular beneficial rate uh, to them to lower their costs. The other one was to allow them the opportunity to to invest. Um, so the the question is, do we just proceed as we exist today with the risk? Do we look for some sort of solution? And uh, we are uh, at this point um, just looking for your input. Okay. But yes, we will come back ultimately okay. with a recommendation. Okay. I think his question Any had to questions? do with Bear Lake. Probably. I'm sorry, I'm Councilwoman. Could you speak to our group? Um, I thought your question had to do with what what the intention was with the Bear Lake project. Yes. And that was not what his answer <laughs> oh. was. I'll get back to you later. <laughs> I was answering the general question. Right. What is the plan going forward on Bear Lake? Or, I mean, you're the same way, you're going to develop a proposal or a recommendation to us? Yeah. Not, the answer is the same. We're, okay. we're still looking for your All input right. so we can come back. I mean, this, this is a very significant philosophical question yeah. for this body. Do we, can, do, we, do we hold to the guns and understand that development has a responsibility to pay for itself? And if there's issues, we understand that we set a policy that puts us at risk and, and we just deal with it and let the market take care of itself. Or do we, find it, do we find it, try to find some tool that allows us to, uh, to assist in that particular development, understanding that it has some very significant ramifications on all the other people who are in the development business who would maybe ask the question, how come I didn't get that too? Okay. Okay. Other questions? Councilman Jensen? My comments would be, um, Getting people to move to our community is critical for the future success of Topeka. So um, I would agree that these tools are valuable assets for developers. I think we need a balanced approach where um, I particularly like your idea of a, a letter of credit. That way um, they have some skin in the game. They still have access to some tools. We can mitigate some of our risk. Um, I think going forward we need a policy that allows these tools to be used responsibly but minimizes our risk as the city and the taxpayers. Okay, with no other discussion, we have someone uh, who has uh, asked to speak on this issue. I'm sorry, were you not finished? Just one more slide. Mr. I'm Mayor. sorry. sorry. I didn't. <laughs> Please continue. I thought there was a law it's and a I thought I was going ahead. So three future decisions. One, um, we want to talk about mitigating future risk through a new special assessment policy. Um, there's a planning forum that the planning or a development forum that the planning department has that we'd like to work through and engage the development community to get their input on feedback on you know some of the options for financial guarantees moving forward. Um, based on those discussions, we could take a policy potential policy to the policy and finance committee that could make a recommendation to this governing body. Um, Lawrence Bay, you know, we've discussed some of that time frame here with next week setting the public hearing, so I'm not going to go into that. And then also Bear Lake, King, Kings Road. So. Okay, another discussion. Questions, comments? Thank you. We have a person signed to speak on this, Chuck Daltmeyer. Yeah, Chuck Daltmeyer. <coughs> not a public speaker, but a builder developer. And uh, I have two developments. I consider those my storefronts, and that's how I sell houses. Uh, I think the easy answer 
and I don't want to see the bonding where we petition for a benefit district and the bonds are issued by the city. It's, um, if you dry that up, you'll dry the development up. Uh, I've been successful and will continue to, uh, but I think a surety bond is, is certainly in order for the future safety of the city. And um, I'm all for the city. They've always helped me. They've always done a good job. The staff, the engineers, and everybody on down the line. Um, <clears throat> but what I want, and I, and I own the south, or and my partner, John Rollenhagen, we own the 237 lots south of Lawrence Bay. We, we own another project that has 230 some lots in it also. And the, the um, I guess the problem with this Lawrence Bay project is not, is not the interest rate. They're selling those bonds at three and a half. How much lower do you want to go? And I do, and I will be pounding my fist if that development gets a special rate when I, <clears throat> when I made it work. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was poor management. It was poor management within, within the city. It was poor management by allowing everything to be leveraged. They leveraged the streets, the sewers, the water mains, the storm sewers, and they even leveraged the land. And then they turned around to these investors that own it now. And uh, they were foolish enough to take that land as collateral. There was nothing left. There's no collateral there. So uh, I will be, I guess, really disappointed if we make a special deal on this. When, when, the, when these investors that own that land right now, just they're not going to come forward and pay those specials down. Uh, some may, there may be two in there that will. But to make them a special deal, I guess, is not right. Uh, I made it the hard way. They, they came as investors in, <coughs> in the business of development, and I do it for a living. And so uh, <coughs> I would like to say to their special fields where they make money, well, would they say if their competitors got, say, a 1% or a 2% rate, uh, and they had to compete against that? So. There, there are some things that we can do. There's more problems with this subdivision than just those specials. There's no uh, utilities in there in most of it. And, and I've got, I do have some ideas on that utility in to help the city get it in there because you can't sell lots without, without power. You don't necessarily need gas because they've got some great heat pump systems, but you've got to have utilities in there. And, not only are developers strapped with the uh, infrastructure of the, the, the water, the streets, the sewers, but now the utility companies are strapping us with their cost. And I've been working with Westar this week on it. It may have some remedies there. Uh, but uh, when, you know, when I modeled it the right way, I, I put 30 to 40 percent into these projects when I walk in there and uh, <clears throat> you know you got to invest in yourself this this whole and that's not the only subdivision in trouble so uh, there's Capricorn woods I mean there there I have okay you have to finish mm. you want to conclude okay. you have a sense well, to conclude yeah that's fine I'm, all right you, know. you need more time do you, do you need would you prefer um, more time to I'm, to well done. I'm sorry <laughs> I'm pretty well steamed. Okay, all right. And, uh, and okay, guess, well, do you have to, then we have, we have to have a motion to, for you to continue. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. How much more time would you like? I don't need any. I guess, do you have any answers or questions for me? No. So, this is just I public do. comment. <laughs> okay. Two minutes. All right. We have a motion to provide you an additional two minutes. Yes, okay. All, all second. All those in favor, vote yes. Opposed, vote no. I vote yeah. yes. We have 10 yes. 10 yes, uh, so you have additional two minutes. For not knowing the rules, we don't do this out of the construction job, so. It's okay. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, Councilman Carmen. Yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, Chuck, th thank you very much for coming. Uh, your reputation in the uh, uh, development community is outstanding, and I so appreciate that you do business here in Topeka and that you're in for the long haul, and I just want to thank you for that. Uh, staff presented us uh, 
three options with respect to Lawrence Bay. And I would just like to solicit your, your feedback, if you don't mind. Uh, the first option was to assess full specials. Uh, the second option was to adjust interest rate. And the third option was partial prepayments. Um, from your position, which, which of those three options is the, the least objectionable to you? Well, I mean, the prepayment. I mean, but, and I will say, I'd like to, I guess I do have a little more to say, is that a couple of those investors went on to buy more property in there after they were already burnt on their current property and they bought them at a special rate and now they are looking like they may be you know on the plus side or headed that way so there is a way out of this for them without them getting the special deal uh, but yeah I think prepayment of those specials would be great um, I had some awkward ideas about some of that, but that was one of them, was, was a prepayment. Um, I question once, I mean, who knows whether they're going to pay their specials once they go on. In, in fact, it's rumor that special payments or special assessments are not collectible at a tax sale. So the, the city eats it if, if it goes to tax sale for the amount of, of payments that were missed. Uh, but yeah, for sure, my, my preferred method is a prepayment. Okay. And I think we need to look a little bit closer into this. Is the city really going to be the only ones to eat this? I think there's two of those partners in there that can survive. And I think they've already bettered themselves because they're in there buying more lots. I, had, I know the price was about 10000 and. There was the lake lots around that lake that was bought by one of them at ten thousand, eleven thousand dollars a piece, and those would go for fifty, sixty thousand. I also think, and this is unprecedented, that maybe those specials could be distributed a little bit different, because you know a million dollar house can afford more specials than say a two hundred thousand dollar home. So, and 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 that type of home. I mean, those people are willing to pay it, and those are very nice lots on the lake. Uh, and as far as the, the lake question on there, I, I conceded in paying for part of that too, and I didn't need to on my lots. And so, where we all, it will beautify the area, it will eventually help the area, and where we kind of shammed on it, I don't think so. I think it's an improvement that eventually this area will take off. And, it, and it's going to help it. They're working on it right now. So, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. you have a, uh, other comments? Well, I just say, I, I, we're working with the engineers right now to start another 30 lot project in Lawrence Bay. And so, if we're going to have uh, real deals on these interest rates, I want in on it. Uh, okay. So, it's good. <laughs> Very good. Yep. All right. We, we understand. All right. Did you have a comment? I Deputy do. Mayor? I want to thank you for coming and speaking candidly with us. It's very hard for people to do that. It means so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for your comments. Is there are there other discussion or points on this issue on this discussion item of the special assessment process policy, uh, Councilwoman Schwartz? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've been working with staff on this, and I want to commend them for. I know they met with a few of the developers. I don't know if we're going to hear how all those meetings have gone, but um, I do know the city staff have been trying to deal with this issue. So thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Con concludes our discussion on this discussion item. Last of our non-action items, we will go to announcements, and the um, city clerk will provide an overview of next week's agenda, please. On the May 19th agenda, we have one uh, proclamation. It's Historic Preservation Month. We have one presentation. It's the City of Topeka 2015 First Quarter Finance Report. We have a workers' comp claim on the consent agenda. The action items will include a public hearing and ordinance for a vacation um, at Lowman Hill Elementary School for USD 501. We have an ordinance for a um, historic landmark district. That is located at 417, 419, and 423 Southwest Taylor Street. We have an ordinance uh, for continued condemnation proceedings for the South Kansas River Pump Station. 
uh, resolution on the 2016 City of Topeka budget priorities and setting a public hearing date of June 9th for special assessments. Thank you. Thank you. And for the announcements, Mr. City Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Governing Body. Um, really, just briefly, uh, I want to thank everybody, uh, certainly this governing body, this staff, but most importantly, the residents who came out to the budget meetings, uh, who participated in various uh, media to, to communicate. Uh, I think this is probably going to be one of the most important budgets that we pass. Um, I keep looking forward to the next six to 18 months. I think they're gonna be very significant in the, in the long-term future of Topeka. And I think the decisions that this body makes on how to address uh, some of these critical issues is, is absolutely vital. So I thank you um, for that. Budget staff is working very diligently to reach out to all appropriate parties, certainly you guys, to keep you informed, get your input on things as we go forward. No vote counting. Um, you know, continuing to to uh, try to to bring forward the best the best information so that 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 this body can pass the budget. And I just want to use that as a segue. And I had two opportunities today to reflect on the people that surround me, um, especially you know the two guys sitting next to me right now, and the rest of the senior staff and the organization as a whole. I'm really proud to be here, and I'm very proud of the people that I that I work with. And uh, sometimes when you get down, they reach they reach down and they pick you up, and uh, very proud to be part of the, the Topeka team, and I'm just excited about the work that we're doing and the work that we're going to continue to do. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Hiller. I had a couple, a couple quick things and a, and a deadline to share. Um, the first is the invocations. I just wanted to make a comment. It's obviously been my month to do them. I have 33 faith congregations in my district. So with uh, the Quakers uh, last week and the uh, Baha'is today, I am for the first time in seven years close to the end of just going through them all once. But I, it means a lot to me to have the invocation at the beginning of the meeting and I just wanted to share that with you. I don't know that I have as, as a council. It, I like um, being able to share the diversity of our community and my district. Um, it, it's a good way to start the meeting for me, and I also like the invocation itself to kind of settle and center. Uh, so I just wanted to encourage all of you as it rolls around to be your turn. I would love to meet the different congregations in your districts as well. It, it, it takes a little bit of work to get hold of people and get them lined up, but I just wanted to encourage you to, to do that as, as it passes around. Um, and second, along those same lines, um, we got a really excellent communication from the mayor's office and, and through Margo about appointments to boards and commissions. And um, I just wanted to encourage everyone to take those seriously too. I, when I, those of us that got elected in 09, there was lots and lots of talk at that time that we needed to bring new blood into our boards and commissions and give, give new people an opportunity to be involved in the city and, and to bring more diversity to those boards and commissions as well. And I think we've made a lot of progress along, along that line. Uh, and we can see it in the refreshed energy in our commissions and in our cities. The way that happens is for every single one of us to take that responsibility seriously and kind of look to people we've met, people from our districts, so all the districts have representation involved kind of keep a crib sheet if, if something doesn't fit somebody right then but they'd like to get involved, kind of keep their name and keep an eye on it as other opportunities come up. What I found is that eventually there is a right spot for each of those people and it's been a rich part of being able to represent my district in the city but also it's had great results. So I appreciate the consolidated process that you have developed over time and just wanted to encourage everybody to take those seriously and find somebody for every single one. The mayor sure. will then interview them and, and make a good selection. He's done a wonderful job. So thanks along, along those lines. And the last was just an item that, one, uh, that a constituent sent to me pointing out that on, um, on July 18th, ESPN <coughs> is going to be here live at the Expo Center. And they will be here covering the national um, Horseshoe Pitching Association's two-week event that will be at the Expo Center. And 
I just think that's very exciting. The deal is to attend that event is free for those two weeks. So it's a wonderful opportunity for all of us to encourage people to go to something world class and that will even be on ESPN in Topeka. But also related to that, I checked with him and, and um, anybody can enter that horseshoe pitching tournament as well. And the deadline is May 18th. So if somebody wants to be in that uh, huge competition, they should step right up. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Clare. Well, I wanted to say I had the pleasure of attending the Fallen Officers Candlelight Vigil. And even though it rained, it was very nice. And I really appreciate everyone that went out and attended that. Um, I also had the awesome experience Saturday to attend a live burn. And I found out it isn't like Chicago Fire. <laughs> um, there is a lot of teamwork and the choreo choreographed movements and the it was simply amazing to watch and I have a heightened sense of respect for our firefighters and I want to thank them and I told them I'd give them a shout out. Um, and another thing, don't forget to attend Designer Showcase House before May 17th at 3130 Southwest Shadow Lane, the money's benefit and support the development and learning of young children by offering programs and services. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Ortiz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to take the opportunity to congratulate all the um, high school graduates this weekend. I hope that they um, are safe and um, they do something fun. Um, but I just, I just wanted to remind everybody it's graduation weekend, so there'll be a lot of activity going on. Thank you. Councilman Shum. Since May 1st, we've had the community police officers at the substation at 25th and Burr. And I can tell you, uh, District 4 is deeply appreciative of, you got, of the officers being there, um, really in the community. Our thanks to Chief Brown for having them there. Um, we look forward to seeing them more often and just developing better relationships. Also wanted to point out that uh, Chief Brown will be speaking at Highcrest's next NIA meeting coming up on the 28th, uh, Thursday, May 28th. The regular meeting's at 7 o'clock, and the police chief will be there to give updates and answer questions from the public. So even if you're not a part of Highcrest, please come out. Thank you. Councilwoman Elisa. I will echo uh, Councilwoman <clears throat> Ortiz's comments um, and congratulate my son who graduates from high school on Sunday and um, today um, I, I know that my daughters like to watch this and I'll say Lorraine congratulations I missed her choir performance and um, I also will say today welcome to Topeka to my mother who arrived from Puerto Rico so thank you Councilman Jensen uh, I have two selfish things on Sunday it was my lovely fiance's 31st birthday uh, she's been a wonderful support as I have endeavored to become a city councilman and on Sunday, my future stepsister-in-law will graduate from high school. Congratulations, Daniel Beckley. Thank you. Councilman Schwartz. Thank you. Well, I said I wasn't in the public hearing this morning, but I did read the comments, and one of them was very interesting. I just want to read a couple sentences. Everyone knows that Denver is known for their Coors plant. Topeka <laughs> has the Mars plant, but most people who live in Topeka don't know anything about it. Our whole industry is based on tourism. The way we can attract people is to get the word out and help these companies advertise. And today we got an email from Mars, um, and it said that they're supporting the U.S. dietary um, guidelines of trying to control the sugars in our diets. And so I want to commend our Mars plant. I think we need to get the word out much more about what they do and, and uh, that they're, they should maybe become what Topeka is known for. So, uh, congratulations, Morris. Thank you. Councilman Cohen. Um, in my district, um, those of you who know, Pizagel's Pizza and Bakery uh, caught fire, and they had their grand opening last week. And um, they actually had a soft opening um, in March, but they're located at 29th and Fairlawn. So, um, go ahead and patronize them. They're, they're good people. I do have a, a selfish announcement, is that um, on Saturday, May 16th, at Lake Shawnee Shelter House Number 1 is the Walk to Cure Arthritis. And this is a fun fundraising event for the National Arthritis Foundation. And registration starts at 8, and the opening ceremony is at, at 
45. Um, my daughter will be this year's youth honoree. And she was diagnosed with systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis in October of 2013. And I've been asked to be the MC for the event. So get some exercise and maybe a possible train wreck, depending on how well I do for that. <laughs> so come out Saturday, Lake Shawnee Shelter House number one at 8 a.m. And let's get some good exercise and it's for a good cause. So yeah, thank good, you. Good luck, good luck with your event, Councilman Harmon. Okay, that completes our announcements. Uh, we uh, have public comment, uh, Mr. Ledbetter. Thank you, Governing Body. <clears throat> Tomorrow we have a JADO meeting, and uh, there's going to be discussion about picking a uh, consultant uh, in reference to the RFP uh, that was sent out, uh, and they're going to be looking at uh, various issues with JADO and oversight of economic development. And so rather than talk about who would be involved in that, I'd like to talk about what they should be doing and what you as JADO members can request of them. And the first thing is that uh, <clears throat> the, the consultant, whoever that is, needs to talk to the NIA people uh, that make up a thousands and thousands of people in this community that have not been listened to on economic development. Uh, they need to talk to their leadership. Uh, we have a group called uh, Citizens for Accountability and Government. It's a dynamic group. We're getting uh, a lot of people and a lot of input about what people want uh, in economic development and the changes they want. Uh, they want change. Uh, most assuredly, they want transparency and accountability of all the money. Uh, they should be talking to CAG. They should be talking to small business people. There's 6,000 small business people in this city that are not represented by the chamber, uh, possibly have a public hearing, uh, inviting small business people and entrepreneurs to, uh, to a meeting to discuss their ideas, uh, not you know, some kind of groupthink model, but actually listen and let them talk and tell you what their concerns are about this community and economic development and how that would tie into JADO or whatever uh, the successor would be. Uh, talk to realtor groups that are concerned about uh, uh, some of the older neighborhoods. Uh, the houses are not moving as fast as they should. And we, all, we know there's some national issues involved. But uh, uh, if you talk to some of these uh, realtors, they, they will tell you there are some local issues involved too, including uh, a lack of uh, job creation, uh, of paying jobs. Uh, maybe even uh, have this consultant conduct a public hearing or like a town hall meeting on economic development and invite the public in, not just uh, a handful of people that have been involved for 13 years and they haven't changed your board and they profess to be experts. Talk to the public. The public is who pays the bills. The public is who has the answers. The public are the people that will come up with creative solutions if they are listened to. Invite them to the meetings, whatever they are, as they're structured, and let them talk and let them tell you what their concerns are. Uh, the model we're under has been in place for 13 years, and uh, the, the chief complaints that I'm hearing, and they are growing, is we are not getting uh, Transparency, we're not getting accountability, and now in the latest uh, few months, now they're interfering in our elections. And uh, this is stuff that, th these are the things that people are concerned with, and they want answers, and they want their input heard, because they have solutions. Just like the people just recently went door to door. They heard concerns, and they heard solutions. And, uh, you cannot underestimate the power of listening to the public. So uh, I would encourage that, be part of that discussion tomorrow night. Uh, I will be there, and uh, thank you. 
Thank you for your comments. That includes the public comment. Uh, we have need for an executive session. Uh, Mr. Sublette, if you want to set the parameters for that, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would request a motion to go into executive session to discuss a uh, uh, workers' compensation issue for 10 minutes to include Jackie Russell, Shannon Langston, city manager, and elected officials. It, it has been moved to go into executive session on those parameters. Is there a second? Mr. Cohen seconds. Discussion? All those in favor vote yes. Opposed vote no. I vote yes. Ms. De Delisa. Ms. Delisa. Did you vote? We have 10 yes. 10 having voted yes, we will go into executive session when the room is clear.